Hello lovelies. I am very excited for today's video. Happy anniversary. Yes, it has been officially one year since my friend Kara and I started this build your own palette series. Wow. I cannot believe that. So thank you to all of you who have been along for the ride. We hope that it has helped spark your creativity and helped you use your single shadows more. So my friend Kara and I from Beauty and the Frizz, we decided a year ago now that we really wanted to get more use out of our single shadows, get creative with it, and that's where the series came from. And if we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist and here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real. Real honest, real relatable, and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And if you are new to this series, welcome. This is a great one to join in on. We have a little extra creative inspiration today. Thank you to all of you that joined in on deciding what we were going to use for that inspiration today. Now, like I'd mentioned, Kara and I started this about a year ago. We were so lucky to have Kendra Morgan official join in on this. Kendra has a great singles collection and I've had a lot of fun getting to see what she comes up with too. So I will make sure to have Kara and Kendra's channels linked down below with their videos with today and any other creators that join in because we of course welcome this to anyone. And if you are not a creator, but still want to join in on the build your own palette fun, please don't forget to tag me in your pictures so I can share them. I love getting to see that this has been inspiring to all of you and you've had had fun with this. So for today, for our one year anniversary, we wanted to have some extra creativity and bring you along for the ride. So a few weeks ago, I asked you to start sending in pictures that you would like us to use as inspiration. So that could be, again, fabric, it could be an art piece, it could be whatever you wanted, something that had a color scheme, a vibe that you would like us to go off of. So thank you to everyone who sent in pictures. I mean, we we really had a hard time narrowing it down, but we did narrow it down to three images and then you all voted for that on my Instagram story. So if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you are at Keep Beauty Real because honestly, I think we'd like to do this again at some point. So join in on the fun. We love having an interactive community and that's a great way to be able to do that. But here is the wonderful picture that was chosen. And I think that this one is extra special. It has a little extra meaning to it. So thank you, Melody, for sending this in. Melody sent this in. And by the way, if you would like to follow her, she is Mel by Grace on Instagram. And the thing about this is it is actually a paper art piece. And I thought it was really great because Melody said, hey, since the one year anniversary is the paper anniversary, I thought that this paper art would be great. So not only is this a beautiful piece of art and it's gonna be so much fun to build a palette off of, it's really meaningful to our one year anniversary. Again, one year, I can't believe it. So I'm gonna be sharing with you the single shadows that I picked for my collection. I'm going to be creating a look with all of you and hopefully you have fun with this and I really hope that this inspires you to use your collection. All right, I think that intro was long enough, don't you? <laughs> By the way, I will have timestamps down below. If you're just here for swatches, if you're just here for an eyeshadow look, whatever your little heart desires, hopefully I can bring that to you today. I'm gonna show you this palette right now. Right. So we're a little bit closer. I still wanted to have some room for the inspo picture just so that we can like honor that beautiful piece of art and you can see where I was coming from. But here is the 10 pan palette. That is really the only, I guess I would say, rule, if you will, that we've had within this series is that we're picking out 10 shades. And I'm sure at some point, in all honesty, one of us is gonna break that rule and it's probably gonna be me because 10, just 10 is hard for me to do. But this is my palette. I really wanted to capture the essence of this. Now I do have to say, in choosing the shades that I did and probably where I'm gonna be going with the eye look, I'm taking inspiration from this, but I really want to go the way of how I've been enjoying my makeup this summer. And that is really a little bit lighter, a little bit more blown out. This picture is obviously, it's very shadow heavy. It's very saturated. And I love that the tones are beautiful. I just have found that this summer I'm enjoying, while I'm enjoying color, I'm enjoying just something like a lighter feel. So even in like the mattes that I chose, I chose things that I know that I can blend out and still have some of that color, but in a lighter, more airy way. And I was looking to bring some brightness and sparkle just to kind of keep it light. So that's where I'm going with this. That being said, again, I do think that this piece is so beautiful. I just feel like with all of these jewel tones and these like really saturated colors, I just didn't want it to be too heavy because I'm just really enjoying that like light summer vibe. Now, what I noticed first in this picture, I mean, obviously the, the subject's face is just like totally gorgeous, but really the first thing that drew me in were the peacock earrings. I love, I love peacock prints. I love the color of peacocks. So that's just really what drew me in. And it is called Girl with the Peacock Earrings. So it's very fitting. So I really wanted to pull in 
the scents of those earrings, but I only have 10 shades, right? So there's obviously a lot within a peacock earring, but I thought that this shade did really well. And in all honesty, I've been using this brand a lot recently. This is a Sydney Grace shadow. And I was like, ooh, I really wanted to go through my collection, use a lot of my Sydney Grace things because I wanted to see if there were things that I wanted to pick up in the sale. You know how that goes. But this is one, when I saw it, I was like, Oh, this is pretty. I've only used this a couple times, so this will be a great time to pull this one back out. So this is one of the Sydney Grace Multi Chromes. This is Chameleon Air, and this shifts from that green to that almost like peacocky blue. I think it's very pretty. I will say that, you know, Sydney Grace Multi Chromes are not the, the best multi chromes on the market by any means, but they really have a beautiful texture. And the nice thing about this is it's not so emollient that it's gonna like, be that more oily feel, but it really does have like a beautiful finish to it. So this to me, again, it's just a beautiful dimensional green. You're not going to see that much shift from this shade, but it is very beautiful. It's just like an extra special green, but I have seen stronger green blue shifts in other brands, but this one is pretty and I wanted to bring her out. Okay, the next one that we have here is one that I just recently purchased. If you saw my Shine by SD haul, this is one that I was excited to use and I didn't use it in that video. So we're gonna get to do that today. I have used it since though, I will say. So this is the shade Flirtatious. You can see this definitely has a beautiful shift to it and it has that purple to blue and it's not iridescent, but it does have a lot of light catching ability. So I can see in this picture, I see the, you know, kind of like blue, purple, almost that like orchidy color. And I think that this shadow captures that well in a lighter fashion. Like I said, I was looking for light catching shadows. And so to me, that just helps keep this kind of like light and ethereal. This is one that you'll just have to see the magic of in the close-ups. Then let's start getting into some of the mattes. So y'all, I brought in some old school players. So this one, it's funny because I pulled it out and I didn't know the name of it. I just pulled it out because I thought it was a fitting shade, but this is actually Peacock. And this is a Makeup Geek original, obviously round pan shadow. So this is just a beautiful like blue teal matte. I think that this really represents the the depth and the shadow of the blues in this picture. It is obviously a very blue and purple leaning um, picture, but I thought that this one would be nice because I know that these Makeup Geek mattes can really uh, be blended out and blurred out a little bit more, but they can also be built up and saturated. I will say I find that sometimes the Makeup Geek mattes don't always swatch the best. Honestly, some of my favorite matte formulas don't always swatch the best, but that's okay. They perform on the eyes really well and that's what matters. All right, moving into another matte. This is to represent a bit of light within this photo. So you can see sort of in the crease and on the brow bone and a couple other spots like in the earrings, you have this sort of like orangey kind of like goldeny tone to it. And I wanted to pull that one in. That's something that I personally love to use as well. And I think it's really gonna balance this palette out. So this is Sydney Grace Mango Tea. This is just that beautiful, I mean, it really is. It's like a mango-y yellow, but it does have a bit of a brown base to it. So it's going to serve as a nice neutral. You know, when I'm building any palette within this Build Your Own Palette series, I'm always trying to create something that is honestly usable and that you could use in combinations, you know, a lot of different ways. And I think that this is one that really is versatile. So that again is Mango Tea from Sydney Grace. All right, if you know me, you will know that I always need to have at least one bright inner corner shade in every palette I do. It's just usually the way I prefer to do my makeup. And for this one, I actually chose a Cleona shade. This is the shade Gleam. And once we get into swatches here, yeah, you're not even gonna be able to see that because this is like so iridescent. So this one for me was just to represent some of the light catching. You can see up uh, in the highlights of that side and up through her forehead, it's almost like a pastel yellow. And then you do have little bits of, I don't know, like that very, very light purple running through as well in certain areas in this picture. So I just wanted to pull in something that to me gave more of the effect of light on the face and not necessarily the color that is exactly represented in the photo. All right, pulling in another Makeup Geek round pan. This is the shade Neptune. She is so, so pretty. This to me is like 
just such a bright electric blue. This is a shade that I love to see in a palette. And this one I thought is really nice because again, you can build this up, but you could also sheer it out and wear it as almost like, I don't wanna say a baby blue because it doesn't have a white base, but a very nice lighter, but brighter blue. So you can see it's a lot brighter than Neptune is. Oh, just such a fun color. This to me is like a perfect summer blue as well. Another beautiful blue that I had to pull out. So this one for me does definitely pull in that bright blue light effect on the face. It also, again, is going to be a really good inner corner shade and it's just going to give some beautiful brightness to the face. This is Everlasting Gobstoppers from Davina. This is a beautiful one. Uh, this is from a collection that I honestly, I slept on, <laughs> I'll be honest. And I just recently got it. Uh, I did go ahead and buy these in the last Davina sale, was it? So you can save 20%, by the way, with the code Keep Beauty Real. Um, that is a non-affiliate code though. So this is just something that I love. Ooh, this is gonna be one that you have to see up close because it's very beautiful. It shifts from like a light purple into that blue, almost like teal. You'll get to see it when we get in close, but she is gorgeous. Another Davina shade, and I'm honestly not sure if I've used this one yet, but I thought that this was the perfect time to pull this one in. This is Homicide. So you can see here, it is a beautiful, it's not shifty, but it is a very lovely, shiny shade. This is really like a deep, deep red. I wanted to pull this one in to bring in some depth. You can definitely see in the photo where this shade is represented. It's, it's that warm red, so I thought it really brought in some of the burgundy tones and then some of those like deeper orange tones that you see on the model's face. And I just think you could really add it with a couple of these other shades and get a wide variety of looks. Here's one that I'm excited to use. This is another Davina. I really like the Davina mats because I feel like they're very shearable, <laughs> but also very buildable. So hopefully you can see that like kind of periwinkle purple that that pulls in. To me, this just brings in some of the light blue and the light purple together. Davina mats don't always swatch great, but they perform great. And that's what's important to me. So then we have one more shade and it's another matte. I tend to put more shimmers than mattes in my palette, but I felt like this one needed some good solid mattes. So this is another Sydney Grace. This is green on Jew. I mean, look at this. Oh, it is so, so pretty. So I wanted to pull this one in. I don't think it's necessarily a dead ringer for any of the greens in this, but it does pull in the brightness that you need within the peacock earrings. She does have a little bit of like green spots of representing like highlight on the face. So this one I thought would be good. And I just think it's a good addition to the color combo in here. Actually, when I was picking out the greens for this, I realized I don't have any green greens, like any true green shadows. They are either lighter and brighter, they're more grungy, they have some teal to them, you know, whatever it is. I don't have like a grass green, Kelly green, and I'm gonna have to get one at some point, but at least, I mean, I'm sure I have it in other palettes, I just don't have it in a single. But this, like I said, represents sort of the light hitting a true green. And so I'm really excited to use this one. And again, I just think it makes for a very cohesive palette. So I'm gonna show you zoomed in shots. I'm gonna change the lighting so we can see the shift in the shifty shades. Be right back. All right, here we have our shades. So we have Chameleon Air from Sydney Grace, Flirtatious from Shine by SD, Peacock from Makeup Geek. We also have Mango Tea from Sydney Grace. And then here we have Gleam from Cleona. We have Neptune from Makeup Geek. And then this one is Everlasting Gobstoppers from Davina. I feel like right here you can kind of see where that purple lean is. And then here we have the shade Homicide from Davina. We have Remy also from Davina Cosmetics. And then we have Green Anjou from Sydney Grace. All right, so hair's tied back, we're ready to roll. I've got my little inspo picture right here. So I think that I actually kind of wanna do something that mimics the way that the color is laid out. I'll make sure to have it right here for just a moment, to mimic the way that the color is laid out on her eye, but a little different, because obviously I'm not gonna do like deep, deep purple <laughs> in through here. I mean, you could, 
that'd be that'd be fun to do it'd be fun to do like a literal version of this but i just want to evoke the feel of this like i said in a lighter way so i do know that i want to use this chameleon air shade on the lid after that, I'm I'm just gonna have fun with it. So let's dive in. Okay, I'm actually gonna start out on the lid and work my way up. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm using my OG Wayne Goss 18 brush. I haven't pulled this one out in a while and I am going to get this wet, but I don't have a tacky primer or glitter glue on at all. Um, I actually just have a little bit of concealer. So we're gonna give this a go. So I think that this color will sort of represent the blue, the green and the blue that's on her lid. Yeah. I'm going to have to be fairly delicate in my shadow application because I did go ahead and put my uh, foundation and concealer on. I do have a little bronzer on. I didn't do blush because I wasn't sure how this look would go. So I was just kind of hoping uh, to do that when I'm all done and we can finish the face together. So, oh, just look at that. I hope you can see how pretty that is. Like it just catches the light. Like I said, it's not like super shifty multi-chrome, but it just has such a beautiful, like multi-dimensional rich texture. So by the way, today is the uh, day of the Christmas in July sale with the mystery bags and I did pick up three of them. So I'm hoping to be able to do a unbagging, if you will, uh, as soon as I get them, because I know that Sydney Grace usually has some of the bags available for a while, even after the sale is done and they stay the same price. So I'm hoping that I can get that up in case any of you were curious and you didn't want to take a risky deep dive <laughs> during the sale. Okay, and I'm going to honestly just keep that to my mobile lid because on the model, if you will, uh, it's definitely like just on her lid and she does have hooded lids like I do. We're probably gonna like blend this out a little bit. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. So now I think I'm going to take a bit of that Remy shade that is the like periwinkle is shade and just run that through, right through the front crease area. And if I have to, because I'm probably gonna like blend over the uh, the multi-chrome shade. And if I have to, I can like add color back to my lid if I feel like I've lost some of the intensity. But this just, it just gives me more of a map. By the way, I was just using the Refer 13. So now moving in with the Sigma E36. This is this tiny, tiny blending brush. Okay, I'm gonna take that Neptune shade. Now, this is one of those times that I almost wish I wasn't as tan as I am right now because uh, I probably could have put a lighter eye base down, but I just used a like close to my skin tone concealer shade and uh, <laughs> my skin is actually pretty dark right now. So these are definitely, you know, going to come up a little bit more murky and a little bit deeper. But if I had done a base that was a bit brighter, you know, the brightness of these shadows would come through a little bit more. I'm starting to get a little bit of fallout. We're gonna have to clean up underneath the eyes and probably reapply some concealer, but that's okay. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of Remy right through the front here. Not, I'm, I'm honestly probably going to cover it up with some of these shimmers, but I think it's gonna create a nice base for those. But this way we get a little bit of that feel of that like inner purple. I, like I said, I'm gonna cover it up here in just a moment, but that's fine. Okay, now taking the Refer 14, I'm gonna take some of that mango tea shade and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that up through here just to represent what you see in the picture. Now, honestly, if I were wearing this look Normally, I would probably not do this part. I mean, it's obviously a little bit more artistic, uh, but it is a lot of colors. Going back in with that Neptune shade, I just don't want this to get too like brown. So I'm adding it right next to the orange without blending them too much, which is hard for me. <laughs> So much for this being a light ethereal look. I'm really liking the way it's coming out. 
uh, but it's not it's not quite as light as what I was considering doing. Okay, so I feel like my under eye is just a little bit murky <laughs> just because of the fallout. So I'm gonna clean that up quick and we will do our inner corner, add a little something extra. I'm, I have a vision for this. I think I'm gonna like it. That feels better already. I did go ahead and adjust my camera settings as well just because I felt like everything was looking a little darker than it is. And I'm trying to keep this somewhat light. I'm trying, I'm trying. So this isn't necessarily representative of the photo, but I'm gonna take green on you on my lower lash line towards the front. Okay, and then with the same KJH and Spectrum number 18, I'm just taking that peacock shade, so that's the really deep teal, and I'm working this into the very outer corner on both the top and bottom. I really like that. So now we're gonna use the lighter shimmer shades to enhance this look. I mean, I could leave it right here, maybe pop one color on the inner corner, but I think I want to do all three of the light shimmers just to bring some extra dimension and brightness to the inside. That to me is gonna make this feel a lot more open. By the way, can you guys tell me, do you even care? <laughs> do you even care like when I talk about like why I'm doing things like, little tips that I think are helpful. Is that a thing? Or are you just like, shut up Kelly, just put on the eyeshadow so we can see it. <laughs> okay, I'm taking this tiny, tiny Real Techniques brush. This is called the Detailer Brush. And I'm gonna start with this dry. This is that shade Flirtatious from Shine by SD. Can you see that? How it just brought that little bit of shimmer? Mmm, I really like that taking the same brush because I'm lazy. We're gonna go into Everlasting Gobstoppers. Oh, I don't think that you can probably see it, but where the curve of my eye is, that blue turns into that purple in this shade and it is so pretty. Hmm. Gotta love a good Davina shade. I'm sorry, they just kill it with the shimmery shifty shades. Ah! Final color, we're gonna take some of that Cleona Gleam and I'm gonna place that over Green Anjou on the bottom, just on the very, very inside. So it just adds, like it just opened up the eye a little bit and I feel like having the green underneath just makes that like pinky goldy shift pop a little bit more. I'm tempted, should I do it? Okay, let's try just a little bit of that up here. Woo! Okay, I don't know that I would normally do something quite so shiny on my brow bone, but it does have a really pretty shift and I feel like it kind of brings up, cause like right above her brow bone, she has this like of light. So I really like this. I like this, it's not light. It's not light by any means, but it's not as depthy as it could be either. So I think now what I need to do is <laughs> go and do some mascara. I might do some lashes for this look, I might. So I'll be back in a second. We can choose a blush shade and a lip shade and we'll be done. Okay, here we are back with mascara and lashes on. I went through with my lashes, giddy lashes. I have not put on lashes in a hot minute. I literally cannot remember the last time I put on lashes. And you know that if I'm gonna bother with it, I don't wanna have to worry about picking glue off my freaking eyes. <laughs> So lashes it is, the little like liner washes off so easily, I love it. So these are the Giddy Lash. And I went through and I figured since this picture is so like blue and purple heavy, why not put on a purple blush? This is, what was this one called? Lilac from Salt New York. Let's see if I can get pick it up without sticking my finger in it. Yeah, Lilac from Salt New York. So we're gonna just pop this one on. It's been a hot minute. So I'm just gonna blend this in. Oh, I love this one. I haven't pulled this one out in a while. Okay, that is lovely. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna pop this on the lips too. It is a lip and cheek tint, so, uh-huh. Yep, I really like that. I need a little gloss. Okay, so over the top, I'm just gonna put on this MD Glow Cinnamon Lip Plumper, just for a little extra shine. All right, the final look with the rest of the face done, I really like this. I think it does bring in the vibes of the picture. And you know what? We used every single shade in this palette other than Homicide, which mm, it's just too much for me to do all in, in, one, <laughs> in one look. Uh, I like this. And while it didn't end up being as light as I was going for originally, I do think it ended up being soft enough. Like it's a lot of color, but it's done in a, in a blendy way, I feel like. You'll have to let me know. Would you wear this? I would totally wear this on the right occasion, like 
let me tell you, I would wear this to work. I would wear this a lot of places. Am I probably gonna wash my face off before I go to yoga tonight? Yeah, probably. It just feels like a lot. <laughs> it's a lot for yoga, but I do really like it. I also am glad to have pulled out the Lilac Cream Tint Pro from Salt New York. So I hope you enjoyed this. I really loved this. Thank you to everybody who chimed in, who sent in pictures, who voted on the pictures on Instagram. Do you wanna see us do more of these? I think it would be a lot of fun. Um, I'm also now realizing that we haven't picked a theme for next month. Mm. We haven't picked a theme for next month. And I think Kara and I chatted about possibilities, but I don't even think we nailed it down. So if you are one who is wanting to follow along and join in on the fun, <laughs> <laughs> Check the comments down below. I'll pin a comment. It's been busy. It's been crazy. I just now got off a Marco Polo with Kara and we're both like, <laughs> we're both hitting the ground running. So make sure that you check out Kara and Kendra's channels and any of the other creators that I linked down below that have also done this. I really did enjoy this. And as usual, I always appreciate it that you take some time out of your day to spend it with me. It really does mean so much. I love getting to chat with you. I love the community we're building here and all of the makeup and more conversations that we have. All right, lovelies, that's gonna be it and I will see you really soon.